I pray, Lord, for blessings upon this uh, graduation today, Father. Each and every person that is here, Father God, I pray, Lord, that we go to a new level with a new anointing, Almighty God, and the fire of the Holy Ghost, God, that we would go out, Lord God, in the highways and the head. How you guys doing? So this is a very formal event. This is a very traditional event. Uh, celebration sacred. We like to view it as sacred. But I want you guys to feel like you can clap and things like that. I mean, it's not too formal. But where the spirit is, there's liberty. So I want you guys to feel like you have liberty. We're going to go ahead and we're going to sing the national anthem if you guys will. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what some proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright This may just seem as another formal event, a celebration of these fine young men and women for their achievements. But those who choose to look deeper, those who choose to step out of the natural and start viewing what's happening today through the supernatural lens, they will see that this is more than just a simple celebration. But in order to understand why we're here today, we have to understand what happened yesterday and the months and years before. 2,000 years ago, God the Father sent His Son, Jesus Christ, to walk amongst us as flesh, a man who was both divine and natural in nature. He felt the same pain that we feel. He faced the same temptations that we face. A man who knew no sin and was sent here to die for the sins of the world. A man who was a servant, but also a king. A man known as the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, 
who upon his completion of his mission is now seated at the right hand of the Father. But understand that it's what happened before the cross that has led us here today. Before the stripes were put across his back, before the crown of thorns was shoved onto his head, before the shame and the humility was placed upon him, and before the nails were drove through his hands. Matthew describes an event that took place within the 28th chapter of the book, an event in which Christ spoke to his disciples, declaring the following, Go, therefore, and make a disciple of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. This simple declaration is known today as the Great Commission. History has shown saints who have gone before us from the disciples to our founding fathers, men and women who have fought, bled, and even died to withhold that duty and that responsibility that Christ has given them. In 1776, after the Revolutionary War and the settling of pioneers into this great land, who seek, re who seek religious freedom from a tyrannical government, with the signing of some documents, our founding fathers successfully declared this land a Christian nation. This land remains a Christian nation. To secure religious freedom, an act known as separation between church and state was signed into order. This act was meant to protect the church from the government overreach and religious persecution. The act declared that the state and government agencies hold no authority over the church and the believer. However, as wicked and evil men gained power within our country, what was meant as good started to be used as evil. Soon, separation between church and state was the go-to defense for the government to silence the Christian within the workplace, to silence the Christian within the school system and within government agencies, health care facilities, law enforcement, military branches. Seeing a need for spiritual guidance within these facilities, the chaplain was created. A chaplain holds no affiliation to government, nor to a church denomination. A chaplain was created to be the voice that brings God into situations, situations that are found within hospitals, correctional facilities, law enforcement agencies, and military branches of the armed forces. A chaplain is not a pastor. A chaplain is not a preacher. A chaplain is not an evangelist. A chaplain is not a jail minister. Though they can operate within those offices, they are simply dedicated, anointed, and appointed men and women who have been called by God the Father to carry out the Great Commission behind enemy lines. Chaplains are not the ones who seek glory for themselves, for no glory is given except to God the Father. Chaplains do not seek monetary gain, as our riches are not of this world, but await us in heaven. The job is not easy. As chaplains often operate within, in, within enemy territory, they are subject to demonic attacks, persecution, verbal and physical attacks, and some have even suffered death. Even so, chaplains have taken up the badge, answered the call from God, and continue to hold the line despite what comes their way. Alas, that's what brings us here today, where we proudly welcome these men and women who have shown themselves worthy to carry their duties given to them and to forever hold their title as chaplain with honor and integrity. So without further ado, we're going to begin the graduation process. I'm going to ask our Chief Liaison Officer, Chaplain Tiffany Johnson, to come now as the process begins. Thank you. Thank you all for coming also, and I'd like to thank each and every one of you for your dedication and hard work that you've actually put into this, and it's going to be an honor serving with you guys. <coughs> so, to start out, we're going to call up Chaplain Major Ronnie Vance.
Chaplain Major Tracy Matthews. Lieutenant Chaplain Brandon Edmonds. Lieutenant Chaplain Belinda Jewell. Financial Officer, Chaplain Tracy Vance. Liaison Officer, Chaplain Kyle Jones. Chaplain Sheldon Tipton. Sure. Congratulations to you all. So it's my honor to welcome you all, but it's also my honor to declare that we have created two new precincts for Sevier County and Newport. So we're going to begin the tradition of handing off the charter application to our chaplain majors. But first, by order of WGL Correctional Ministries, National Headquarters, Precinct Number 6933001 in the City of Salina, State of Tennessee, United States of America, it is hereby declared that the formation of correctional chaplains, licensed and ordained before God and man, unified together through bonds of brotherhood and under the banner, guide, and protection of God the Father, have met the need, the requirements for an individual precinct under the leadership of the National Precinct to be hereby established. 
So let it be that on this day, November 1st, 2021, Precinct number 6933002 within the city of Sevierville, State of Tennessee, United States of America, is hereby officially established and recognized as an active service precinct within WGL Correctional Ministries. It is now granted all rights thereof within the United States of America. Jurisdiction of all active duty chaplains is subject but not limited to the above stated territory, which may be expanded or decreased at any time if deemed appropriate by the Council of Where God Leads, Correctional Ministries National Headquarters. I'd like to present this to Chaplain Major Ronnie Vance. Precinct number 6933003 within the city of Newport, state of Tennessee, United States of America. I'd like to hand this to Chaplain Major Tracy Matthews. now tradition that we reflect on where we came from. The Bible says do not dwell on the past, but it also says that we must remember God's amazing grace. The grace that brought us from the pits of hell to where we stand yes. today. So, we do a tradition here where we play the amazing grace on trumpet. I'd like to take this time, if you guys would stand up please, I'd like to take this time right now for all the chaplains to just sit Listen to this, think of the words, and think of God's amazing grace and how far He has brought you. Because without Him, we're nothing. something real quick uh, uh, this came on me as I was standing there if I can have all the chaplains set your diplomas down come up here and turn around and face the crowd please you guys go down there this wasn't rehearsed sorry I'm just following the Holy Spirit I've never ever been to a graduation where I suffered so much trial to get here I was attacked every which way you can think of these men and women here were too I mean, they was calling me and we knew exactly what it was the devil attacks what he's scared of this is what I thought he was scared of, and I'm sure it's part of it. But as I was praying and praying to the Lord the other night, he spoke to me and he told me, this isn't all that he's scared of. Their job's starting, but 
what he's scared of is some of you standing right out there watching this. Come on. Understanding that this may be your calling also. Okay? So I believe in imparting. I believe in anointings. And I'm going to ask if you guys feel the need in your heart. If you guys want to be prayed for. I'm going to ask my chaplains to pray for you. If you guys will come forth. Whoever feels it, if you'll come forth right now, I want to have, hallelujah, I want to have our chaplains pray and anoint you and pray over you.
You guys all keep working, keep working. Thank you guys for coming, we appreciate it.